this is the second video for your History 1000 C class. Um, if you haven't watched the first one yet, if you're for some reason joining the class late, watch the one underneath first. Okay, that will make things make a bit more sense. So um, I've read all your first aid class postings. I thought they were very interesting. You will want to go and meet the fun and exciting people on your on your time machine journeys. And um, I thought you had some very insightful comments to make. Uh, about uh, Wikipedia and about the um, other video, the, the Shift Happens video and, and the Billy Joel video as well. Um, I think um, the reason I put those three videos at the beginning of the class is to get people thinking about what history is. Um, uh, you know, Billy Joel's encapsulation of 40 years of history is, is, is uh, pretty interesting, you know, and um, I like the way he puts together both um, uh, major events and um, celebrity events, sporting events, because these are the things that make up uh, our lives and it's very easy to sort of um, forget about uh, the sporting and celebrity side of things and uh, concentrate instead just on the uh, big political situations. Um, the um, shift happens once is, you know, history is still ongoing, things are moving. Uh, we confidently should not expect America to be the world's only superpower uh, in 30 years time. That would be um, an illogical uh, situation really. Um, that would be something that really doesn't happen in history. Um, uh, whether Russia makes a comeback or India and China's economies continue to boom, um, you know, whether the um, United Europe would uh, become uh, much more of an effective uh, force and stop disagreeing with each other, there is going to be a shift in, in global politics. There always is and always has to be. And the uh, Wikipedia video um, I thought was uh, really interesting. I mean, you really need to be careful with Wikipedia. Um, it's good for, for looking things up and, um, you know, most of the time you, you're probably going to be okay if you just want to somewhat inform yourself of it. I think the example I, 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 I use is uh, from this book, if you're reading, and it's you know you're talking, thinking about uh, uh, revolutions in South America, and there's this passing comment that uh, you know Napoleon's role in South America was important. And you're like, oh, I don't quite understand what Napoleon's role was in South America. Um, you could maybe look that up on Wikipedia, and you know get the background information that you might need. But you you know you can't rely on that to be accurate, and you're much better off um, using things like. Uh, Britannica online or something like that, which you have access to as St. John's students. Um, I think the other thing people don't understand, yes, it's a wiki, which means it's um, anybody can write in it, that's what a wiki is, and uh, the pedia part, it's an encyclopedia, and um, we don't write history from encyclopedia, <laughs> uh, the way you do history at college level and beyond is about interpretation and about opinion and about argument, not about memorizing facts and, and details uh, and uh, reproducing them. Obviously that has to be the meat and bones of um, uh, what goes on, um, but you need to elaborate on that and that's what you're going to be doing in this class. So for most classes you have a, a lecture to watch and um, it's very important that you don't skip these. I give background information that you might not get from the book, and I also talk about the, the readings as well and how they fit together. So it's very important that you uh, watch these. Uh, so you click on the syllabus where it says lecture. Uh, you'll notice it's blue, which means it's a hyperlink. Uh, so you click on that, and uh, it'll ask you whether you want to open or save the um, PowerPoint, and you should always uh, save it, create a folder on your on your desktop or in my documents and save it to that folder so you know where they are. Then go into um, your uh, programs and open um, PowerPoint up and then open up uh, the video, the download you just said, it was just saved. Um, what you want to be doing is listening to the audio on it. Um, so don't just flip through the slides because there's not a lot of information on the slides. The most information is in uh, the lecture. You listen to the lecture and the slides just progress. So um, go to slideshow, pick um, start slideshow from beginning and, uh, and set it going. Make sure you're somewhere you know, where you can listen to me without disturbing other people or uh, have headphones on or something. Um, 
So watch the lecture, um, look at the discussion board post and figure out what the question is that you're going to be asked to answer. And I would usually do that before you read. Uh, it's not necessary, but you know, then you have the question in mind as you're reading. And for the first class, you only have uh, one chapter to do. Most classes, I think you have two chapters to do so we can get through the material by the end of, of the class. Um, so you have this question that you have to answer. Now, you uh, need to form an argument. Okay, That's basically what uh, this, the skill part of uh, what you're going to be uh, practicing and learning to do in this class is about. Um, so as I said, um, history is about an interpretation uh, of um, uh, evidence. So the articles that you read in each of the chapters are your evidence. You have two types of evidence, primary source and secondary source. Primary sources are, were written around, at or around the time of the events. Uh, so they can be chronicle accounts, uh, journal accounts, newspapers, um, even poems, there's some poems in there as well. Uh, so you need to think about those as, um, okay, so say you were constructing a legal argument, okay, you're gonna appear in court. Your opening sentence in your uh, post should be your uh, argument, okay? This is what I think, this is the question, this is one sentence that answers the question. And then the rest of your post goes on to prove that you've um, answered the questions. So you can use your primary sources, if we're carrying on this analogy of a legal case, as uh, eyewitnesses. So these are people that saw the events, you can call them into your argument as eyewitnesses. And then you'll usually be given uh, two or three or four opinions from uh, historians as well. So you can call those into your argument as, um, as expert witnesses, as you would a, in a trial. And then you need, at the end, a closing argument. So uh, this is just answering the question again, saying how well you've answered the question, etc. Okay, so when you construct your argument, you need to uh, quote and cite um, the um, primary and secondary sources. Um, so obviously if you're using a direct quotation, and you should use small pithy quotes, okay? You're looking for something around six to ten words that really encapsulates somebody's argument, not a you know four or five sentence run-on, because that will be the size of most of your post and uh, that's not your words, and it's not even using their words uh, very cleverly either. Uh, so you will get many points for that. Um, but short, pithy quotes are great. There's a great, great use of evidence, okay? You need to cite this, okay? If you're using a quotation, you need to cite it. Uh, so you just, uh, you know, use it, because uh, I, I, I know what book it's from, it's all from Getz. So just uh, in brackets after your quotation, put the name of the source that you're citing, uh, say, if you're citing from Derek Diamond, Diamond, comma, five, it's on page five, and close the bracket. Okay, that's all you need to do to cite. Um, but you also need to cite uh, when you're using somebody's argument uh, or somebody's thoughts, even if you're not quoting directly from them. And uh, this is something that, uh, this is where students kind of fall down on knowing what to cite. Um, so if you're using some, another's words, you cite them. If you're using another's thoughts, you also have to cite that, okay? So if you say, uh, Jared Diamond believes there's four main reasons, even if you're not using any of the words that are in the article, that still needs a citation because you are citing the um, uh, Jared Diamond. Um, if you write, there are four main reasons and you're actually using Jared Diamond's four main reasons, um, but you're not naming Jared Diamond, you still need to cite it, okay? You can't get away with pretending that's your own uh, thoughts. So unless it's absolutely your own thoughts and words, uh, you should cite. And you should be naming your historians in, uh, in your um, posts as well, because then you're saying, it's not just me that thinks this, it's Jared Diamond that thinks this as well. And uh, so you're using the source uh, well. Okay, so those are my um, main pieces of advice. Uh, remember you're not writing a narrative, you're writing an analysis, you're writing an interpretation. There's no right answer. You will probably find that your classmates will come up with 
I had a similar or very, very different answers to you because that, that's the, the way I've asked the questions, that they can be uh, written in, in that way. So there's no right answer that you're looking for. Um, obviously, it has to make sense, and you should be using as much of the evidence as you can to prove your point. So don't just use one of the sources. You don't have to use them all. And uh, the questions to think about, this is another trap you don't want to fall into, don't answer them in turn. Don't say, okay, this is the big question, this is my one sentence answer to that, and then the questions to think about, go through and answer those. Because you won't create an argument in that way. You'll, you'll have a series of bullet point and little answers. Okay, you're looking for a whole argument, okay. So you'll get better and better at this as uh, the class progresses. So uh, uh, have a good, uh, a good try this time. Make sure you look at uh, the good examples under assignment and grading. I've given you uh, an A range answer and a B range answer and a C range answer and a failing answer, which is plagiarized, okay? Uh, so you, you, you don't really need to go out and look uh, for any other web sources. Everything you need is in the book to answer these questions. You shouldn't be shouldn't really be bringing outside material in unless uh, it's uh, particularly uh, pertinent. Um, there are um, other sources for you to uh, uh, look at uh, on the uh, on the website uh, the, to enhance your learning. These are optional. I've collected radio programs and uh, videos and uh, websites there that we thought can you can use to help you uh, uh, enhance your learning on this if, if you want but that's that's optional and um, some things you might get more interested in than others and, and want to sort of find more about uh, you know if you really get interested in World War one or something there's some great uh, websites uh, gathered on the site to, to, to do that um, okay so I will look forward to reading your posts tomorrow and uh, don't forget to log on and do the second post. Okay, that's the other thing I'm upset. Uh, that's worth, <laughs> keep forgetting, um, that's worth 20 points. So 80 points for your first post and 20 points for your second post. And um, your second posts um, need to refer to the work of three other uh, students. There's an example of this on under assignments and gradings as well. So what you want to be doing is reflecting back on your own thoughts uh, and using how um, other students have uh, tackled the question as well. So don't write, you know, Carla, I thought your post was great, uh, Angela's, I didn't agree with you at all, or, you know, that sort of thing. Try to incorporate it in one paragraph in a, in a bit, bit of a more sophisticated way. Okay, that is definitely it now. Um, I will uh, look forward to reading your posts tomorrow.